We get so many questions on us, on how to make a business partnership work. We have three companies going on four. We get questions of should I do it? Should I have a partner? Does it work? We are gonna answer those questions. Check one out. Guys, welcome to the annex. I think this is the annex. This is like our extra little planning. This room. is our conference room. I'm calling it the annex because I've been watching a lot of Michael Scott, a lot of The Office. My fiance has never seen it. It's a great show. If you like The Office, comment below. So this is the title: How to make a business partnership work. Guys, we get a million Facebook messages about this yep. all the time. We could probably throw them up on the screen if we can find them. Yep. If we don't. Well, it's because we didn't want to show all of your guys' faces to the whole world. But right. before we get started, we have a little entry fee, okay? Just like the MFCEO Project podcast, which is our favorite, which you should go listen to. Yep. You need to share this with someone yep. in order to watch. That's our only entry fee. Just share it with someone. And I, I don't mean just like share it with like one person and then watch all of our videos. Right. Every video you watch that you get something good from, right. go share it with someone. It's just, it's just the right thing to do. It helps us out, it helps you out, it helps us grow, which is gonna help you and your businesses. All right, so obviously we are partners, okay? We own the businesses, we're making things happen. Yep. And like we said already, all the time, we're getting Facebook messages, we're getting emails, we're saying, hey, do I need to have a partner? Do I, should I get a partner? Yeah. Should I not get a partner? How do, how do you work it? And so that's what we wanna talk about today. And I think, the thing is, is that we want to go about this as approaching it in a certain way, okay? And we want to approach it in the way of why do the questions, why do the questions exist in the first place? Yeah. Why do people even ask? Why is this a question? How to make a business partnership work? Why, why is it a thing that needs to be talked about, right? Why would, why would you even watch this video? <laughs> what does this video even <laughs> have to do with, right? Good point. But the, the answer is, it's risky. Yeah. There are risks involved in having a partnership or in starting a business with, this is starting a business with one other person or with multiple people, right? Yeah. There are risks. So that's what we're going to talk and about before today. before you think that we're just going to tell you, oh, it's not, it's all hunky-dory and it's all great. And I just want you to watch this video and see that we're actually going to tell you how we actually interact. Right. Like we don't always get along. No. Like we fight, we get we get to it. Like we're not like all buddy buddy all the time. This is a business. This is serious. This is our families on the line. We t we don't take this lightly. So if you're actually thinking about being serious about right. being an entrepreneur and opening a serious business with a partner, whether it's a friend, whether it's not a friend, this video is for you. Right. So there are risk involved. Does this marker work? It does. Okay. This marker works. So there are risks involved. Kale, okay, what, what's, what's a risk involved with, with having so, a partner? So obviously one of the biggest risks is sharing your freaking money. And this is, I got a question about this literally last night. They're like, how do I split it up? Do I go 50-50? Do I go 80-20? It's my idea, but I just need him to be on with me. And that's a tough question. That really is. is something that, that gets you right here. Because the reason you get into business is to make money. Can right. you just be real? Right. No, absolutely. And like. There's all these ideas of how to split equity, how to do it, and everybody talks about Shark Tank. Oh, well, I'm gonna do this, and uh, if I give you this, then I want 40% of the company. Yeah. It's not exactly how it works. There's a lot involved in it, right? There's a lot around having ideas. There's a lot around execution. There's a lot about what you actually do contribute to the business. So that is a huge risk. We're gonna talk about how to solve that risk later. Kip. What is another risk? Another risk is just partnership. giving up control of the ideas, of the decision making. Having to run it by another person may be something that you're not comfortable with. I, I personally was not comfortable with this from the get go. So when we first started, Taylor just came on and was like, hey, I'm interested in your Amazon FBA business. Tell me about it. And then he offered to join in. And at that point, I was like, hell no. He told me no. He told me, I was like, Hey, do you want a partner? And he was like, nope, I'm good. My follow-up question was, okay, do you want an investor? <laughs> and then it was like, well, yeah, I can use the money. Yeah. But this is big because you can't make big decisions. You can't go and blow the bank account. You, you have to communicate with other people. And sometimes this can be hard. I think that is a lot of times what Kel and I have argued a lot about. Not necessarily about like, like, oh, I want control, but it's, Kale has an idea that he thinks will work. Mm -hmm. I have an idea that I think will work. Yeah. And then it's, okay, what do we do? Kale, so true. what is another risk? So the third risk, guys, and this is a very real one, is will this work long term? And I'm talking about 
personality here. I'm talking about work ethic here. I'm talking about vision here. I'm talking about execution and I'm talking about like just basic smarts. Okay. So if you're starting a business, a lot of you watching this channel, some of you are in college, some of you are fresh, some of you are older, but it doesn't even matter. You are literally like, Hey, should I do this with my buddy, with my best friend? And you're not really evaluating it from a perspective of is this person in a year or two years or three years worth millions and millions of dollars to the company that we're going to build together. Right. And I think that this is something where we can actually share a lot around this, but Kel and I weren't yeah. great friends when we got into business together, right? We honestly didn't have an idea a, a great idea on each other's personalities, but this brings up, this is like a huge risk in itself because like Kel was talking about, it brings up a lot in personality of your work ethic, what you do, how you do it. It brings up a lot in, do you think the same, yeah. right? Do you want to start a business with someone who thinks the exact same as you? Or do you want to start a business with someone who thinks a little differently than you? These are major risks on making a business partnership work. And these are things. So I think that we can just go through them and just kind of like talk about them. And then I'll tell you how to get over them. Cool. So we're talking about sharing profits, okay? And, and the first question everyone asks me is always like a legal question. Yep. And they're always like, should I get an LLC or an S Corp or should I get a tax accountant? Okay, first of all, screw all that. Yep. Okay, it doesn't matter. Nope. It's all going to work itself out. Yep. Here's the deal. You have to be comfortable with the idea and with just your, the rest of your life, basically, with, with sharing the profits. That right. is the key. If you can't like actually when it when it when the going gets hard yep. and the profits aren't coming in at the level you think they're supposed to be coming in, you still have to take half of it and hand it to Taylor. Are you okay with that? Because if you're not, then don't do it. Like right. this is not like a it, we're in the middle on this issue. We we are a business partnership, but we're going to give you the facts and the truth yep. about it. So I mean, like with us, okay. So whenever I came in and I became an investor in yeah. the original Amazon FBA business, right? Yeah. It was split and it was not split 50-50. Split right. It was split where Kel had more ownership than I did, right? But he had already started it. He had already executed on it. I was just coming with some money so we could launch more products, right? As we did more and more businesses, right? When we founded them, we had an umbrella LLC that held everything else. So I have a certain percentage. He has a certain percentage, right? So we did it all based on basically ideas, execution, and then the money that was contributed. It's very like, like honestly it's simple, but the only thing that you have to keep in mind with this, right, is when you get started, the LLC, escort, tax account, all that crap doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay? What matters is getting started and going and going on this ride. But it's a little different for us because we talked about this before, we talk about it a lot, but Almost 99% of our profit that we have generated, mm -hmm. right, has been reinvested. Yeah. It's been reinvested into the next company and the next company. Yeah. So neither of us have gone in and taken out a hundred grand and been like, okay, this is my, That's this is my 50%. Yeah. Now, I don't know what you're doing with your 50%, but I took mine, so <laughs> deuces. Like, yeah. we haven't had to deal with that yeah. because everything has been reinvested. And I think everything that's has why been reinvested. it's worked because I had a guy literally texting me yesterday and he's more worried about how do you take it out? How do you, how do you take? When you're first starting, like I'm telling you, as an entrepreneur, so you're going to have to so eat good. dirt for a while, for a long, like we are doing well. And we, like he said, we haven't taken anything out, right? Because when you are talking about sharing profits, this is a long term thing. Yep. This is like later in life, we're going to take out a, like 10 million, 20 yep. million, a billion dollars from this. We're not going to take it out right yep. now. And if you have a partner that's already asking you like, bro, how, how do I get my salary? How do I get my cut? When do I get my cut? You might want to look elsewhere because we never even spoke about that right. until I don't even know until very recently. Like recently. We, yeah. And that was like, we started talking about when Kel quit his job, right? Cause we yeah. had to establish what Kel's salary is, but yeah. salaries don't necessarily affect equity. They affect the value of it, but they don't affect the percentage own. Yeah. But that this is something that if you are concerned, if someone is super concerned about it up front from the get go, like Kel was just saying, might be a sign that you don't want to be in business with them. Yeah, exactly. Let's go on to the next one. That was fire though. Giving up control. Okay, so for this one, this giving up control one, I think is like, should be just like my question because <laughs> I am like 
the ultimate, like, I want to be in charge of every single freaking thing, right? And so this one actually does bother me. Like, we're, we're being honest on this channel right here. The thing that bothers me the most about this is that when I have an idea that I know is, a, that I know is good, and I, and I could probably have it done in like an hour or two hours, I still have to call this guy. And if he's not answering his phone, I literally just get pissed. I'm just like, this should have been done, but I had to. So if you're that type, just know you're gonna have to like, like breathe and like take it and just, I don't know, because it's not gonna be as efficient. You're yep. going to have to, to run stuff off someone. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like there's been times where I've had an idea that I thought was amazing and Taylor has stopped me. But there's also been times where I've had an idea and I couldn't get a hold of Taylor and I wasn't able to execute it as I, as I wanted it to. And that's just, that, that was annoying. So you have to balance that. You just have to yep. do it. I think, that, I think that these two, giving up control and long-term viability are really closely related, right? But we wanted to bring this up as a risk because it's something that happens a lot with us because I, I want to go into this, but I'm not going to yet. But both of us are type A personalities. Okay? Oh, yeah. Both of us are stubborn. Okay? Both of us are very confident in ourselves. Okay? And so when Kale has an idea, Kale just wants to go and do it. Yeah. When I have an idea, I just want to go and do it. And if it was my business, if I was if it was only me and it was me doing my thing, then I could just go do it. If it didn't work out, then it didn't work out and it's you can't blame anybody, right? Yep. One of the best things about having a partnership. In my opinion, one of the best things is even though this can be annoying, mm -hmm. even though when Kale wants to do something, I'm like, dude, don't do it. Don't do it. And then he does it anyway, right? <laughs> and then I do the same thing, right? I'm like, I have this great idea. Kale's like, ah, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do it anyway, right? But one of the greatest things about being in partnership with somebody, being a partner in business, is the fact that you have someone else to bounce ideas off of. Yeah. Okay. The fact that you do have two people, two viewpoints, two opinions coming in, irregardless of how strong they are, and you can really talk about things and make decisions and go for it and make it work. And so I would say this one is, this is a huge risk if you are the personality that hates giving up anything. However, even if you are that personality, but you're willing to compromise on some things, this can be a huge benefit. Yeah. To being in and partnership. Before you tune out, because I know we've been talking here for a little bit, before you tune out, this is one of the most powerful things that I've ever heard, okay? Someone told me this, and this is the only reason Taylor's even here, if I'm being real, is because I always wanted to own 100% of whatever I started, always, because I, I know how I am, and I know how hard I can be on people and making that happen, right? But some guy stopped me and he said, Kale, like, it's better to own 50% of a billion dollar company than it is to own 99% of a million dollar company. And he's like, every example that I've, and this guy was very smart, very wealthy, very accomplished. And he said, every company that I've seen where a partner like you with a strong personality has refused to bring on other people, to bring on people that can guide him, that can, that can make him better, he has ended up with that million dollar company and 100% of it when he could have had this. And so, guys, you, you, you're gonna need help at some point. You gotta kinda like humble yourself and just let it happen. So let's move on to long-term viability. Yeah. Because I think this one is big and we kind of talked about it in giving up control, but I want to like, I don't want you guys to just think that we're just sitting here and talking. Yeah. Like we're actually trying to help you. We're trying to give you a how-to because this is something we get a ton of questions on. This is something that has obviously defined how all of our businesses have yeah. grown and where they're going and how they're growing. But yeah. when you look at long-term viability, I already said both of us are type A personalities, right? You have to look at type, you have to look at personality type. We do not agree on a lot of things. Is that a negative or is that a positive? It's a negative when you're in the moment and you just want to go to your idea, but you also don't want to surround yourself with yes men. You don't want to surround yourself with people who are just like, oh yeah, go do that. You need different opinions. When that guy is talking about, oh, you need to bring on people around you who can help you who can point you in the right direction, right? He's not talking about bringing on two, three, four, five people yeah. who all have the exact same opinion and exact same thought process as you. Yeah. He's talking about bringing on people that complement your strengths. Yep. And for this one, guys, I think it's so funny because right now we have whatever audience is watching this, yep. right? And me and you are here at whatever stage we are in our business. Yep. But in five years, 
Like, we're going to be somewhere insane. You guys are going to be looking back on this and thinking, wow, they were talking about long-term viability, but I just think that's funny. And I really think that the key for us from going between, like, where we are now, seven figures, whatever, to where we want to be, eight, nine, ten, I don't know, is 11 figures too much? I don't know. But if we get to that point, I think the key, just the biggest key to all of that is just going to be us kind of balancing that dynamic. Because yeah. he, he just said it. Like, we don't agree a lot. But we have to figure out which ideas are best. And the ways that it's helped us, guys. So if you have a partner, you're button heads, and you're like, I don't want to do this, you want to do this. The best way is just to sit in a room and freaking hash it out. Because we've done this like five or six times, and the best ideas we've ever had just come out of that moment. Because yep. you're fired up, you're, you got your 100% attention, you're, you're, you're passionate, and, that, and it just bounces and it creates something better. I don't yep. know what it is. It's weird. I think a big thing for long-term viability, for where you're going long-term to see if you're going to match up with a person is if you're like, if you're like talking to somebody and they're like, and, and, and you're talking to them about being, becoming a partner, ask somebody what their vision for the company is. Yeah. Because irregardless of our different personalities, irregardless of what we think or what we want to do, one thing has always been the same. Yeah. And that is, is that we share the same vision for where the company is going. Yeah. Okay. Both of us shared the vision of we're going to build a billion dollar empire. Both of us shared the vision of we're going to reinvest the profits into something bigger, into something bigger, into something bigger. Yep. Both of us share the vision of where we're going to go. Yeah. And when you share a vision, this stuff becomes secondary. True. It becomes secondary because you know where you want to go. It's just what are the steps that you take to get there? And I would, I would add to this maybe the whole thing we've kind of forgotten about this. This whole presentation is this word. Right? Work. Right here, okay? So work. So we have the vision. We we are there, right? But if you don't you should be evaluating, does your partner have the same vision as I do? And are they going to put in the work necessary to achieve that vision? So because good. let's be freaking real here, guys. The vision that we have come up with leaves zero room for not having this. If we don't have this, we ain't gonna get there. And you'll be watching this in five years and you'll probably be laughing like they didn't get there because it's probably on us because we didn't work hard enough. Yep. Same exact thing with you guys. You need to like watch them before you sign anything, before you do anything. See, is this person showing up? Is this person there when I need them? Is this person responsive? Because it's only going to, it's like marriage. I don't know. It's like, mar like you ever, you ever heard that like if you're in the honeymoon or you just started dating someone. Oh, it's all, it's great. It's awesome. But you fight a lot at the beginning. What do you think it's going to be like 10 years into marriage? You're going to be laying it into each other. You know what I'm saying? So we're married. Huh? And I think another thing with this too that we haven't talked about, but now we're kind of getting into this like why it's awesome. Yeah. Like why it's good, right? Is what we're kind of been moving into based off all these things. Is another thing too is that, yeah, we have the same personality, but our strength and our skill set is also very different. True. I am more technical than Kayla's. We need somebody to set up the lights and set up the camera and make sure everything's working right. It's me, mm -hmm. right? Get the internet working. It's me. Casting vision, doing all that stuff, Kale does. And I've, I've kind of explained this before, but here's the difference, okay? Kale has this idea of, okay, we, I want to be, I want to be doing this in a year, okay? Ah, I want to talk about the next company because it's such a good example, but I can't. Uh -huh. I want to go start this company, okay? And Kale's like, okay, I want to start the company. Okay, let's go, let's do it. And I'm like, Okay, cool. Da, 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 da. I call a number on my phone. Have us a meeting for it tomorrow. We can talk about starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Kale was like, bro, we need to start a YouTube channel. He was like on, a, on his way home from work doing yeah. something like we need to start a YouTube channel. We need to go and do this. And he called me and he started a YouTube channel. And my first thought, okay, his thought was let's start a YouTube channel. Let's get in front of some people. Let's, let's talk. Let's share what we have, right? Mm -hmm. My first thought was, okay, well, if we're going to do that, we need a camera. We need a studio space. We can't just go shoot in our house. We need a place to do it. So I made calls and guess what? That week we got a studio space. We had filmed the first video. We had put it up on YouTube. Yep. Okay. So there's, there's, we complement each other's strengths and each other's weaknesses very, very well. I think it's great. I know that we're just talking. I know that we're standing in a room with a whiteboard <laughs> and we're standing here and talking. Yeah. And I know that we always do this at the end of the videos. Maybe we should like, maybe we should like, do something and start doing this at the beginning of the videos because I feel like the people who stay around for this part is like the people who get the most out of it. Yeah. How can we do this at the beginning of the video? But we're talking about this to help you guys. Yeah. 
Yeah. We're talking about this because this is something that we get a bunch of questions on. And our mindset has always been, if we're gonna get a whole bunch of questions on something, nope. we're just we're gonna, gonna make a video it. and we're gonna address it. Okay, so like Taylor just said, the only reason we make videos like this is to answer your questions. So to answer your questions, for those of you who stuck till the end, I don't wanna get another DM from any of you that are watching this right now that doesn't answer these questions, okay? So this is what you do if you're, if you're thinking about it, right? You think, can I share the profits with this person for the considerable future, for the next 10 years of my life? Can I give up control of my company for the next 10 years of my life, at least partially? Is this someone I can see working with day in and day out, going through the dirt and the slug and the grind and the crap in order to achieve what we want? Okay, so you answer those three questions correctly, okay? Then you get to the question that Taylor talked about. Do they have the same vision as you? Yes or no? Check. Okay, and then finally, before you sign any paper, you look right here and you see, are, is, does this person have the work ethic of a freaking beast? Is this person a beast? Because if they're not, if they're not, if they're not a workaholic, if they're not a workhorse, if they're not any of those words, any of those people that you see as successful, as smart, as hardworking, if they don't emulate that, they're done. They don't make it. They don't make yep. the cut. That's all you gotta do. Don't ask me, should I start an LLC? Should I get an S Corp? Stop texting me that. This is what matters. Yep. Should I get a partner? Those are the questions that we get. So the video was how to make a business partnership work. Yeah. You make those things work, you answer yes to all those questions that Kale just said. It'll work, at least from our experience, yeah. right? Guys, we just wanna help you. We just wanna answer your questions. We wanna provide value. And you know what? We actually talked about this video before we made the video. Yep. Because one of the biggest things we're trying to do right now is we're trying to put out so much content on YouTube. We're trying to be helpful. We're trying to be experts, be authorities, right? And honestly, the difference between somebody like us, somebody in our channel, our YouTube channel that has like 37, 3,800 subscribers and somebody who has 100,000 subscribers, right? Yeah. The difference between us and them, 99% of the time, is that the people who have 100,000 subscribers have had some video go viral. Yeah. Some video that was just crazy, life-changing, and it went viral and then they got 100,000 subscribers, okay? Yeah. We talked before this video and we were like, should we really do this? Is this, does this video have the potential to go viral, to get 100,000 views, 500,000 views, a million views? At the end of the day, I don't know. It could, but at the bottom line, we made the video because the question went well. If you guys appreciate videos like this, right, where we're standing here, we're talking, we're giving you our experience, we're telling you stories about exactly what we've gone through, comment down below, what should they type? Yeah, what they should type authentic. Because that's exactly what this is not like some big flashy production. We can go out and we can film, we can post one video a week. We can go out in Pittsburgh and film some flashy clip that has a chance to go viral. Or we can stand here and talk to you guys. We can't do one or the other. We can't do both, right? So we're either going to give you value more often, high quality stuff that's authentic, or we're going to go make something fake. So let us know which one you want below. Just, just let us know. And with that, we love you guys. We hope you liked it. If you are subscribed and you are here, thank you. You're a family. You're the reason why we're here. If you have not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Hit the like. Hit the just comment. Just do everything. Kel's dancing, so there's already music, except when we're filming that there's not music. Music is put in and posted. So we don't actually know what the beat is going to be. But Thomas, who has been editing all our videos, shout out to Thomas, who's been killing the game. Uh, try to match Kel's dancing up to Peace. Peace.